Okay, so this slide is about all the words that you may hear in relation with machine learning and the domains of applications. Uh, so for me, I'm a computer scientist, so computer science is at the center of the slide. Uh, statistics is also very important. Uh, so we talked about the relationship with artificial <coughs> intelligence. And what's interesting is that historically it turns out that a lot of ideas that are used in machine learning were invented by multiple people from different subfields. I mean, we've talked about linear regression a bit. The idea of fitting a line to a group of points, I mean, you were already doing it in high school when you were measuring things in uh, chemistry or physics or biology experiments, and then you were seeing that there was a more or less linear relationship, and then you were trying to find uh, the line that was fitting the data the best. This, con this happens in a lot of disciplines. Um, so you'll find that engineering, has looked at that, statistics have looked at that, electrical engineering and signal processing have looked at that. Uh, and uh, so you get concepts uh, that have different names and that are all interrelated. So for instance, classification is also called pattern recognition because you're trying to find the patterns of your data that uh, enable you to uh, label an object as belonging to one class or another. It's also called, as I've said, discriminant analysis because the separating function is called the discriminant in, st in statistics. Um, so, <coughs> yeah, then people can have endless debates on what's the difference between machine learning and data mining and knowledge discovery and pattern recognition and so on and so forth. And then recently we've had this explosion of business related to the buzzwords such as big data and data science, uh, which, uh, you know, now data is really cheap and easily accessible for lots and lots and lots of applications, uh, which is why we create data science masters and uh, programs, uh, because this has applications, as I've said already, in many, many domains. Okay, so my goal here is this is an intro course is for you to <coughs> identify, to be able at the end of the course, so mid-December, uh, to be able to identify what kind of problems can be solved uh, with machine learning and by what kind of uh, machine learning approaches under which framework. Uh, so once you've identified that, to be able to uh, identify and apply uh, the most appropriate algorithm from uh, family of classical algorithms that we're going to see during uh, the course uh, of this course. One of the goals is that you're able to uh, apply these algorithms uh, to real data. Uh, we will see package, uh, packages and software libraries that allow you to do this in a kind of black box fashion. You just hit a button and like what, write a one-liner. Uh, and it runs all the optimization and everything that's needed to solve uh, this problem. Still, it's good to know <coughs> what's under the hood. So, well, uh, at the end of the course, you should be able to also re-implement some of these algorithms yourselves, uh, at least uh, in the most simple fashion. Um, and, and a very important aspect is that you should be able to compare and evaluate different machine learning algorithms uh, when applied to your data. So we'll see a bunch of different techniques. Uh, when you have a new problem, which of those techniques are most likely to work? Uh, and how do you evaluate that you found the most appropriate technique for your problem? So that's what we will see throughout this course. Uh, so the syllabus, so again for people who arrive late, uh, all the course materials are on my website and I will email the whole class with the link so you'll have all this information. Uh, so the course <coughs> is divided between lectures and labs. Uh, when there's a lab, bring your laptop, otherwise you won't be able to do the lab, so might as well not come. Again, if this is a problem for you to bring your laptop on Friday <coughs> afternoon, come talk to me after the class. Um, so we'll talk 
after the break here. Um, we'll talk um, more about uh, supervised learning. And next week, right away, I've told you it's really important to be able to compare and evaluate um, uh, models, so we'll talk about that. And then we'll see a bunch of different uh, ways <coughs> to solve machine learning problems. Um, we'll start with Bayesian decision theory. Then we'll do, so I've told you there was going to be a lot of linear models. That's <coughs> what we'll do uh, the two weeks, this two, two weeks in October. Um, and then <coughs> we'll move away from linear <coughs> methods. Uh, and we'll see nearest neighbors, <coughs> tree-based approaches. If you've heard about random forests, it's in this lecture. Uh, support vector machines. Uh, so on the day of support vector machines, I have a lot to say about support vector machines, so we'll do two lectures instead of one lecture in the lab. Um, so then to compensate for that, the so following week, uh, we have a short lecture in the lab, and before uh, the lecture, we'll have a graduate student uh, from uh, my lab who will come and give a research talk about uh, the research he's doing, uh, which relates to what we will have learned uh, the previous week, and which should give you an idea of uh, things that are going on uh, at the moment and what kind of research you can do on those problems. Uh, and the last two weeks will be on uh, dimensionality reduction and clustering. <laughs> so most of the labs will be about a challenge. I hope that's what's come here. Yes. And the challenge will be a project. Uh, the goal of this project is, well, twofold. First, it's for you to <coughs> try and apply all the techniques we'll see during the class uh, to a real data set. And the other goal is that your grade will be partially based on this project. Um, so the two first labs will, uh, so fr this Friday and next Friday, uh, We'll do a tutorial on Scikit-Learn, which is a Python uh, library or set of libraries uh, to do machine learning. And from then on, you'll be working on the challenge uh, to uh, apply all the techniques we see, we'll see to this challenge. Um, so I'd like you to work uh, by gr on groups on this project. So either by pairs or groups of three. Um, so you'll have some time to uh, discuss about this among yourselves, uh, but at some point uh, in the coming weeks, you need to decide who you're working with, uh, either in pairs or three, groups of three, uh, and email me and your TAs about it. Um, so the challenge is the Kaggle challenge. Kaggle is a community of data mining and machine learning uh, period, actually, uh, which offers a number of not only challenges, but also forums to discuss the challenges and courses. And it's a great resource about uh, machine learning and data mining. Um, and um, so there's all sorts of challenges. And some of them are challenges that are offered by companies with a monetary value to it. So if you are the person who solves the task the best, you get $10,000 or something. Uh, I don't think it's ethical for me to propose one of those challenges uh, as part of the course. Uh, also, the, one, the only one I found that was adapted to the length of this course was about optimizing pricing for pipes at Caterpillar, and this sounded a bit boring. Um, so, I mean, I didn't think you would be motivated to do this every week. Uh, so, I found another challenge, which I hope uh, you'll find a bit more fun, uh, which is the San Francisco Crime Classification Challenge. And the idea is that you'll have uh, data, so made available by uh, San Francisco Open Data, uh, on crimes happening in San Francisco. So, of course, it's anonymized. Uh, but it's, you'll have information of what happened uh, when and where. And so from this, it, the goal is to try to predict. So I think, I'm not entirely sure, but I think they give you information about uh, what happened on 
So every other week, and you have to try to predict uh, what type of crime were the crimes that happened on the weeks in between. Um, so the, this is a challenge that's based on open data and proposed by the Kaggle community. Um, so it's um, evaluated within the context of Kaggle uh, on uh, an interesting uh, criterion, which is the quality of the code you submit. And the quality of the code is rated by other users. Uh, so it's both based on interest and uh, readability of your scripts. Uh, so this can be motivating or not. Uh, I have to tell you that I'm not grading based on code quality at all. Uh, what I'm grading on is based on, well, maybe slightly, uh, but in, in that I want you to really enter the competition and to really participate. Uh, but actually, I don't even think that we'll have the results of that before the end of the course. So um, we might have temporary classifications. I'll let you know. What I'm interested in is a project report that you'll write about the techniques you've tried and the results you've obtained. Uh, the code, I figured you have to run code that runs and figure <coughs> out the bugs and solve them to make a good report. So uh, I won't be grading on code. Um, and of course, uh, we'll look at uh, the prediction performance. It's not it's only a small part, part of your grade, but if you make a good predictor, uh, you'll get a better grade than if you don't. And uh, so the challenge closes in next June. Uh, so you're welcome to keep working on it or just stop it after the end of the exam. Uh, if one of your scripts is, uh, uh, one of, uh, is rated uh, as one of the best, you can get Kaggle swag, which is like a cup or a t-shirt or something like that, so which is a small motivation, but mostly you work on it if you're interested in working on it. Um, evaluation, I think, is a question I have to address here. So as I said, your evaluation will be par partially based uh, on the project. Um, so, during the lectures that happen on October 2nd, uh, I will give you more details about the projects. So there'll be a handout uh, with like, specific information about what I'm expecting from you and how you will be graded. Uh, as I said, you, you're graded mostly on the written report. <coughs> um, if you find some, if you have some <coughs> difficulties and then you solve them and you write about them, that can be interesting. Uh, <coughs> If you find some, if you make some interesting discoveries in the data, uh, I, one of the things that I want you to do is to try at least one method <coughs> in each of the categories that we will see, and that's what the labs will be about. So, during each lab that's related to the project, uh, you'll get a chance to apply the methods we've talked about during the lecture uh, that's just before that uh, that lab and to ask help uh, from your TAs. Um, so the position in the leaderboard, I have to check that we have a position in the leaderboard uh, before, uh, before the end of the course. Um, what I call community involvement, uh, I'll come back to it again, but it's, uh, it's a small percentage of your grade, but it's um, asking questions in class, asking questions during the labs, uh, participating in the forums of the challenge, uh, all those sorts of things. Uh, it's, I think it's interesting, it's valuable for you to uh, ask the people around you if you have questions or share some insights you've had. Uh, <coughs> so it's a small percentage of your grade. And there'll be, so, the project will be half your final grade, uh, the other half will be the written exam, uh, so, which is on uh, the morning of December 15. Uh, so it's closed book and pen, of, pen and paper. Uh, so there'll be all sorts of questions. Uh, so, you know, questions on things that have been defined in the course and 
maybe some proofs we've made during the course and some problems to solve. Uh, of course, not just uh, <coughs> regurgitating what I've been telling you, but also using it. So I only have a few more things that I wanted to present to you in this introduction, um, which are resources if you want to <coughs> do more, learn more uh, about machine learning. Uh, so one of them is where do you find data? So one thing you have to know about if you're doing machine learning is the UCI repository. So UCI is the University of California, Irvine. Uh, it's a very nice place. Uh, it's on the coast between Los Angeles and San Diego. I did my PhD there, it was nice. Anyway, uh, that's not the point, but the point is that uh, they are maintaining a data set of publicly available data uh, to use for machine learning, uh, so for people who develop new machine learning approaches or also people who are starting to do machine learning and want to try out their methods. Uh, the advantage is that, so not only is it publicly available, but it's very well known, which means that uh, this is good benchmark data. So lots and lots of people try their <coughs> methods on UCA data, which means that you have a point of reference to compare yourself to, and uh, that when people tell you uh, their, uh, perform the performance of the algorithm on the UCI heart data, you can very quickly see if it's a good performance or not. Uh, there's a few more where you can find data that is, so they have all sorts of, they have classification, regression, uh, with different types of number of features, uh, size of data sets, and so on. Uh, there's a few more uh, resources here. Uh, another resource, of course, is journals, uh, where <coughs> machine learning research is published. Uh, the biggest is the Journal of Machine Learning Research, uh, it's uh, hard <coughs> reads usually, but it's uh, where uh, people who do machine learning want to publish. Um, and a bunch of other places. Uh, essentially, I'm giving you this so that you have an idea of what are the most reputable sources of information uh, on machine learning. And uh, <coughs> we do a lot of conferences in machine learning and we publish a lot uh, in the proceedings of uh, conferences. Uh, so ICML and NIPS are probably the two biggest ones. Yeah. The others are uh, that I put there are also uh, uh, good ones. They're not ranked in the order of, uh, of importance or recognition in the field. Uh, but again, if you see something that's been published in one of those venues, it's probably good work. 